Today I'm going to have a look at the distribution of the sample mean, but we're going to look specifically at where we know that the population was originally normally distributed. So here are the notes. I've taken these from Miss Harris's worksheet. Miss Harris used to be a fantastic teacher, worked at KEGS, and her notes say the distribution of a sample mean if x1, x2 up to xn is a random sample taken from a normal population distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then the distribution of the mean of x is normal. So we're told that the mean of x is distributed as a normal distribution where the mean stays the same, but the variance is now sigma squared over n. This is known as the sampling distribution of means and its standard deviation is sigma over root n. You can see that to get our sigma over root n, we've just square rooted the variance, so that's where it's come from. In the formula book on page 8, it gives us this. For a random sample of n observations from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, we get the mean of x minus the mean of the population over the standard deviation over root n is a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So this is our standardized form that we get given on page 8 in the formula book. Okay, let's see how this works in a question. The heights of a particular species of plant are normally distributed with mean 21 and variance 90. I think it's always worthwhile writing down the information as we get it, so we're told it's normally distributed with mean 21 and variance 90. A random sample of 10 plants is taken and the mean height is calculated. This is the key thing, we're looking at the mean of a sample. If we were looking at the mean of a sample and the sample was large and we didn't know what distribution it was, we'd be thinking central limit theorem. But because it's a small sample, we've only got a sample of 10 and we know that it's normally distributed, we're going to be thinking, we're going to be using our sigma over root 10. So I can say my mean of my sample is going to be normally distributed, the mean's going to stay the same, but this time we're going to get 90 over n, and our n was 10. So that's equal to 9. And now it just becomes a normal distribution question. So the first thing that I would do when I'm drawing a normal distribution is I would draw the curve. Then we've got our z values of our standardized normal distribution and our x values of our unstandardized normal distribution. We know that the mean of my standardized normal distribution is going to be zero. The mean of my unstandardized normal distribution, we're looking at the red one now, is going to be 21. And we're asked for the probability that the mean is between 18 and 27. The mean of our sample that we're taking, we know that the population mean is 21, we're expecting the mean of our means to be 21, but a specific mean of our sample, what's the probability it's between our 18 and our 27? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find out what our z values for our 18 and our 27 are. So we're going to do that in the same way as we normally do, we're going to say z is equal to our x minus our mean, except this time, because we're doing the mean of our sample, we're going to do x bar, divided by our variance, and this time we're going to be using our sigma over root n value. So for the 18, we're going to get 18 minus 21 over sigma over root n is going to be 3 this time. And when I do that, I get minus 3 divided by 3, which gives me minus 1. I can write minus 1 in for my z value. When I do the same with 27, I'm going to get z equals 27 minus 21 over 3. That gives me 2. So I can put 2 in on my diagram. The question is, find the probability that our sample mean lies in this shaded region. So to do that, I'm going to find the area from 2 downwards. So I'm going to find all of this because we know that our normal distribution tables give us less than our value. And then I'm going to need to take away this last bit here. So first of all, let's have a go at finding the blue part. Well, this is just a case of getting our tables and having a look in our tables. So the probability that my sample mean is less than 27 is going to be the same as the probability that my standardized normal distribution is less than 2. So I look up to, on my table of values, this is on page 19, it's 2.00, and that gives us 0 0.5080.
But now to find the red area, we're going to look at the probability that my sample mean is less than 18. Well, that's the probability that my z value is going to be less than minus 1. But I can't look up minus 1 on the table. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to look up 1, which is going to be around here, and find the area above 1. So that is the same as the probability that my z value is more than 1. Because my data is continuous, I don't need to worry about equals 2. We can't do more than on our table, so I need to do our probability that our z value is more than 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability that my z value is less than 1. Now I can look that up on my table, and we see that that is going to be 1 minus 0 0.5040. So looking at that on my graph, we're saying I want to find this red bit here. But I can't look that up on my table. I know that the whole area is going to be 1. So to find this, I'm going to do 1 take away all the rest of this area. And when I do that, I find out that my red area was 0 0.496. So my probability of my sample mean being more than 18, but less than 27, is going to be equal to my blue area, which is 0 0.508. Take away my red area, which was 0 0.496. And when I do that, I get the probability being 0.012. Let's finish off by having a look at an exam question. This question is taken from the OCR January 11 Statistics 2 paper. It's question 2. The random variable h has the distribution as mean being mu and variance being 5 squared. The mean of a sample of n observations of h is denoted by h bar, is given that the probability that h is greater than 53.28 equals 0 0.0250, and the probability that h bar is less than 51.65 is given by 0 0.0968, both correct four decimal places. Find the values of mu and n. Because we're given that it's means of a sample, we should immediately be thinking, is it central limit theorem? The problem is we don't know the value of n, we don't know the size of the sample, and we can only use the central limit theorem if we've got a big sample it becomes more accurate the bigger the sample is. What we do know is that the original distribution was normally distributed. And that tells us from what we were just looking at that the sample means are also going to be normally distributed. It's a six mark question, so we're expecting it to be fairly challenging, but let's have a go. So the first thing I would do is I would write down what I know. So I know that h bar is going to be normally distributed with the mean the same as the mean of my original population, but with variance 5 squared over n. And I don't know what n is, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And because it, we now know it's a normal distribution question, I would draw a normal distribution curve. I strongly, strongly recommend drawing a normal distribution curve for any normal distribution question. I think it makes it a lot easier. And we know that we're going to have z for our standardized normal distribution and h bar for my values before I standardize. So we know that the mean of our standardized normal distribution is always zero. We don't know what the mean of our h bar is, so let's leave it as mu. We do know that if h bar is less than 51.65, the probability is equal to 0 0.0968. So we're having a look at this second bit here. Now we need to work out where to put this onto our diagram. Because the probability is less than a half, I know that it must be on the left-hand side of my normal distribution curve. So I'm going to put this in here. And I know that this area, this red shaded area, is going to give me 0 0.0968. And that is where h bar is 51.65. Then we need to put on the other bit of information, again, the probability is less than a half, so we know that it's going to be on this side of our distribution because we must have less than half the area. And we know that h bar in this case is 53.28. So we immediately know that we're expecting the mean to be in the middle of this. So what I can do now is I can find the z values which give me these probabilities. And this probability is 0.0250. Let's go for the blue probability first. The first thing that I want to do is I want to find the z value for this probability. The problem is my table will only give me probabilities more than five. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to do one minus this probability to get the number to look up on the table. 
this area, the area less than my h bar, is going to give me 0 0.975. So it's the 0 0.975 that I'm going to look up on my table. I know that in the case of my blue part, I know that the probability that my z is less than or equal to the number I'm looking for is going to be equal to 0 0.975 which means that this question mark is going to be 1.96. I don't recommend using question marks when you're doing this in the exam. I'm just doing it because I'm doing this fairly quickly. So now I can use my formula for finding out what my standardized Z value is. So I can do my H bar minus my mean over my variance. Well, in this case, that's going to be five over root N. I don't know what mu or root 10 is, but I do now know Z is 1.96 and I know that H bar is 53.28. I've run out of space a little bit. I'm sure you can set this out better. So we've got one equation now with two unknowns. What I need to do now is the same thing with the red information to get another equation with two unknowns, and then we'll have a go at simultaneous equations. So looking at the red bit, again, we're going to need to find the probability that Z is less than a number. Let's go for small Z, make it look a bit more official. Again, we can't look up 0 0.0968 on my table. So I'm going to have to look up on minus it, which will give me all the rest of the area greater than the Z value. So when I do one minus it on my calculator, I get 0 0.9032, and that's the number I'm going to look up on my table. And when I look that up on my table, I get the value 1.3. But that's on the wrong side of zero. I want a negative number, and the reason is this has given me a Z value over here, and it's given me the area less than that. So the Z value corresponding to this is just going to be the negative, so it's going to be minus 1.3. I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to say that this is equal to uh, 0 0.9032. So I can say that my Z value, which I must have got, is equal to H bar minus my mean over 5 over root n. And when I put in the numbers that I know into this, we know that Z is going to be minus 1.3, and that's equal to h bar, which is 51.65, minus my mean over 5 root 10. So we've now got two simultaneous equations. We've got this one, and we've got this one. I just need to solve them to find out what n and mu are. I'm going to do that by bringing the 5 root 10 up to both sides. So on the top equation, I'm going to get 5 root n times by 1.96 and that's equal to 51.65 minus mu and on the other equation I'm going to bring the 5 root n up and that's going to give me 5 over root n times by minus 1.3 and that's equal to 51.65 minus mu. Now to eliminate mu I'm just going to subtract my equations so that gives me 1.96 minus minus 1.3 which gives me 3.23 lots of 5 over root n's and that is equal to 1.63 when i do this to find out what root n is i get root n equals 10 so i know that my original n must have been 100 i can pick either of my two simultaneous equations to substitute that back into and when i do that i find out that mu is equal to 52.3 and that's the question finished.